Despite my uterus's best efforts, I am still alive. First of all, I would like to thank everyone who asked after me. This isn't atypical, this is something that tends to coincide with my monthlies. While it is getting somewhat progressively worse, it, we are dealing with it. This isn't really any anything out of the ordinary, it does happen occasionally if you guys have been following me for a long time. But regardless, the way you guys still show concern for me, and the way you guys are so patient with me, it really means a lot, so thank you. Now for those of you who know, and for those of you who don't, my name is TK, your resident Luna. And today we're watching episode 5 of season 2 of Good Omens, and this is the penultimate episode, and in our last episode, we found the origins of Aziraphale's failed magic act, and there was a comment that was talking about how it was so climactic for being something with very low stakes, and while the magic act itself was very low stakes, they honestly just could have hit the bricks at any time, it's not like anyone could have found them. What made it so suspenseful, this is the moment their trust in each other became implicit. And that's a big step for any relationship, where you can just automatically trust them to do what they need to do, or trust them to trust you. As things stand, that trust means a lot more to Crowley than it does to Aziraphale. Mostly because Aziraphale doesn't really understand it. Because Crowley comes from a place where there are lies and machinations and power struggles. In Aziraphale's world, there might be a power struggle, so to speak, but everyone in heaven is at the very least honest, sometimes even brutally so, most of the time. He doesn't necessarily understand how important that implicit trust is, or should be to him. It definitely is to Crowley. He might put a little too much faith in that trust, as shown in the previous season, I believe in episode 4, when he told Aziraphale, hey, listen, we can go to the farthest ends of the universe and we can just hang out there. And he didn't react well when Aziraphale was like, no. This just affirms that this season is going to end in disaster, despite the spoilers that I got in my previous videos. Now, because this is the penultimate episode, I think what we're going to see here is the hope spot. And this was a phrase coined by places like TV Tropes, which I have a very complicated relationship with, but that's another story for another day. During an action scene or during a show, there is, is a small inkling or a small moment where it seems like everything might turn out well, right before everything falls apart in the worst way possible. Now, this happened in Arcane, where Jace finally realized that he's actually part of the problem. This happened in Word of Honor at Gu Xiang's wedding, and it happened in Our Flag Means Death, right before Steed left Edward at the dock. Those shows, specifically, just like this one, are all character-driven stories. What I'm looking for specifically in this episode is for Maggie and Nina to have any kind of agency at all. It seems to undermine the point of the first season, where Anathema burns the prophecies, and then to come back to the second season and have Maggie and Nina essentially not make any decisions of their own. I might feel some type of way about it, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I hope they find some redemption in this episode. I'm gonna be honest with you, guys. I don't like it. And it feels very, very unfair. And then there's Bees and Gabriel. And I know I keep calling Gabriel Michael. It's because John Hamm looks like a Michael. I don't have a lot of logic when it comes to that reasoning. Just bear with me, okay? I'm pretty sure Bees and Gabriel have some sort of connection. Knowing how they paired everybody off in the first season and how they're pairing everybody off in this season, something's going on. They're not the enemies they seem to be, especially after after the third episode, I want to say, Bees was clearly concerned. Whatever Beelzebub is planning, the story is going to have to do some yoga type stretching to get it to make sense. Now, granted, that just means the story is doing its job because we're not supposed to. It's supposed to keep us guessing. I hope they wrap it up in this episode and not try to extend it to the final episode. Although I won't be as disappointed if they don't as I would be with whatever is going on with Maggie and Nina. And once again, I left my headphones in my bedroom. So once I go get them, we will come back and commence with a drama, I promise. Okay, we're back with Shax. Make up my way downtown, walking fast, faces pass and I'm homebound. Yeah, I can make the same joke twice, except this time I won't get copyright claimed. Demons. Yeah, he, he don't care. Are there any 
killers in hell anymore because they all seem like bureaucrats to me. I will say the bookshop is quite idyllic, very uh, dark academia that the people love these days. As you can tell by the green, I'm still in my early 2000s gamer face. Harpsichord? I trust we'll see you there with your harpsichord. Yeah, he don't want to be there. <laughs> Yeah, nah. A 1965 Doctor Who annual. The 1965 annual was indeed never printed due to problems at the BBC. I know, I work for the BBC. You'll let me look at it. I'll even let you sniff it. Maggie and Nina are depending on- Are they? Just don't know it yet. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Are you haggling? Don't tell. This guy does not care, Shax. Also, once again, are there any bloodthirsty demons left in hell? They all seem like bureaucrats. Oh, this place is still the same. No circumstances. This man is so well dressed. A first edition of S.W. Erdnase's expert at the card table. Azira fails making sacrifices, I see. It's not for sale. Are we really doing the Fez again, David? Put it down. Actually, no, it wasn't Tennant who did the Fez, was it? That was, that was Smith, right? Come on, does sound like Mandarin. That sounds like Cantonese. Greetings. This is the worst all hands meeting I've ever seen. Our mission. Weren't you disintegrated? A legion's like about 6,000 demons. Yes, I know. This a work meeting. Uh, one more. Didn't bunny ears get disintegrated in the last episode? In the last season? Shex, you're not super charismatic, are you, bud? Yeah, that sounds riveting. She don't like you. <laughs> Marguerite is not about you right now, Aziraphale. You know what the energy Aziraphale has? Well, actually, he has the perfect vibe because he is one. The, 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 an older person who runs a very specific kind of store and they have tried really hard to identify with all of the customers that come in and sometimes it just doesn't quite hit. Whittering on about the plume of your imaginary tool. Bravo. Just enjoying the show. Are they going to talk about the Christmas lights? Because I have things to say. Nia is not there to make friends. You've been together long? Hmm? <laughs> what? It certainly looks like that from here. You guys are always together. He's not my bit on the side. Far too pure of hardly anybody's bit on the side. Oh. And then again, other people's love lives all seem so much more straightforward than our own. Girl, break up with her. Oh my god. Do, is there an occupational therapist somewhere on the street? Can they come to the party? Uh, he's what? What is he? You just need to print out an itinerary, honey. All right, there and he gets vaporized again. Bunny Ears has a kink for getting vaporized, I see. Skip intro, because it's like two minutes. Come here. You got an amnesiac archangel hiding out in the book. Who we haven't seen in two and a half episodes, mind you. Smite Smoke. Smoke. No. Well. <laughs> I saw that as fail. You ain't slick, bitch. Have you thought of just talking to him? Have you? Did you really? Did you see that? Okay, so it wasn't just me. Hi! <laughs> you tried to destroy him. Uh, I don't remember that. No? When you have to confront your spouse's abusive sibling. I was there. Oh. When you told my only friend to shut his stupid mouth and die. See what I mean? And I did not care for it. Yeah, no shit! You're making him risk his entire existence for you. <sighs> Crow, honey, are you a little jealous? Yeah, he's gonna actually do it. Well, if you're really not him, what are you? I think this is what's left of him. A house. Yes, a house. Someone lived for a very long time, but now they're gone. There are actually quite a few people who describe memory loss as that. Where is your memory then? In a matchbox. <gasps> oh, it's all coming together! If it happens again, it seem like it's an institutional problem. 
He's remembering parts of the plan. Look in the box. Look in the box. Look in the box. I said it's all coming together. They're so cute. I'm sorry, they're so cute. He's definitely not in the shop. Does that count as a lead? It's just- I mean, yes, it does, actually. Learning where they're not is definitely a lead. But I don't think I saw him. His assistant? He doesn't have an assistant. No. You met the assistant. Okay, I was like, that's weird. Yeah. That's Aziraphale himself. He likes books. Did y'all forget already? I don't know if it helps, but at one point, Mr. Fell and Mr. I mean, the traitor and the demon had a secret meeting about what to do next. Ah. It was a secret. I wasn't there. <laughs> oh, I didn't listen. They said it was private. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Muriel does take everything literally. You're really nice. Don't find me. And. Not. No, but you're good. Jim's condition really is quite similar to memory care. You're up to something, I can smell it. What yeah, he's been up to something all day. Wait and see. Have you any idea how irritating that is? Yes, it's so irritating. Oh my god. Checking on Nina and Maggie and make sure they are on their way. Or you could just explain things to him, Aziraphale, and things wouldn't go as badly as they might go in the next couple of days here. Pretty. Okay, and here's the mean lady. Oh. What exactly is it that they do do? Um uh, stand on their own two feet? Like the government said. Jesus. <laughs> Maggie, do you have something planned? Yeah, no one ever said it was a party. Something's wrong. Well, uh, lots of things are wrong right now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> accurate. I'm gonna do it just to get away from you, fucking weirdo! Cute. Doubling up on patterns again, but cute. Night is a meeting of the Wickmer Street Traders and Shopkeepers Association. And we all are partaking of the hospitality of Mr. Fell. Who is living a fantasy right now. <sighs> well, it wouldn't be a Shopkeepers Association meeting without dancing, would it? Uh... <laughs> What's going on? My friend said I was in danger, and now I'm in here, and you're all acting... I just had a thought. Who is Nina? Just wanted to talk about the Christmas lights. Someone's wishing everything was simple. Oh, Maggie. Sorry, the masks were funny. <laughs> COVID restrictions. Oh, cute. I'm a seamstress. Indeed, a worthy craft. <laughs> no, I'm not a seamstress. I'm a seamstress, like like an accountant. She's she's a personal accountant. <laughs> I just realized that's okay. Now is this a fails doing or they're doing? We're having a ball. I could have told you it's important. I'm afraid I'm hosting a business meeting. Okay, no, a zero fail. This is important. Have a volleyball. No! This Ah Crowley, come on! And and in the back, Tom Wamsgans is just sobbing <laughs> with his hands up in the air. Why is everyone talking like they've escaped from Pride and Prejudice? Just getting into the spirit of things, I suppose. Spirit of what things? What we do, isn't it? No. No, but isn't it? Now I'm really worried. Crowley's freaking out, and I don't blame him. I can now really see the um, the effects that COVID had on on the production. I definitely can see it now. It is seldom indeed that our little village has the fortune to welcome one so amiable, so genteel, and if you will allow me, sir, so well made. And <laughs> bedazzled. <laughs> I feel like I feel like <laughs> John Hand might have pulled that out of his closet. <laughs> Oh god, the mouth noises. Please cease and desist. Really, this is all Azura Fails ever wanted. Did they all wait for Shax to use the elevator? Shax said, I ain't taking no damn steps. Not having a very good day. My partner, Lindsay, has gone. Was it my fault? What? No. Lindsay, Lindsay was not good for you anyway. She liked me very much. I'm, well, I know I'm hard work. Oh, oh, no. A partner should never say that to you. A partner should never say that you are hard work or hard to love. That's so fucked up. Oh, my God. Perfectly safe in here. Tuck 
technically, this bookshop still counts as an embassy. I think you need to stop this charade, and we need to work out what to do. I am not giving them... Jim, people will get hurt, Angel. I think you're overestimating how much trouble we're actually in. Angle? Yeah, um... Spelling, not a strong point. No, I'd say. <laughs> Might I remind you that this bookshop is technically an independent embassy. And this is when the angels show up and immediately cancel it. And as such, you're an outlaw, Aziraphale. You have no protection. Really doesn't. a legion of demons by my side. You have a very large group. 50 seconds. What do you say? Ah! What, me? Don't they? Yes. Be honest. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I'm Gabriel. Shax, you're blowing it, bud. <laughs> they said, oh, the angel, Gabriel. No. Yeah, toast. T-O-S-T. -T. Toast has an A in it. <laughs> Who are these people? What's happening? We don't know. <laughs> Honestly, absolutely, we don't know. We don't know what's happening. Do you? Engagement clause 112 subsection 3. Civilian non combatants must be given sufficient time to evacuate the area of hostilities. I mean, Aziraphale can put in a formal complaint to the Dark Council of the Dukedoms of Hell if you want. In D&D, devils are the bureaucratic ones. Bees definitely set shacks up for failure. I'm calling the emergency services. Mm, where's your service? For the door frame. You can't cross it. Oh. 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 Did we really just kill the bureaucrat? I want Mr. Sandwich up front with me. Nina, Maggie, you take the rear. Maggie, come on. I'm not leaving him to face them on his own. Who are you two? Because now I'm starting to have doubts. I'm trying to cross my arms, but my microphone's in the way. Who are you guys? Happy anniversary. Huh? I thought we were going to- I thought we were going to the hotel buffet! You're a good lad. Not actually. Yes, you are. None of this makes sense. You're in trouble, and we aren't leaving you on your own. We aren't in danger. Crowley will be back in a moment. He will have a plan. Why don't you stand up for yourself? Make your own plans. I am. But rescuing me makes him so happy. That was a weird thing to say, Aziraphale. You're an angel. I know, I know sweetie. Fine, it's all right, officer. I'll come quietly. Come where? Ooh. <sighs> Crowley, I think you're doing too much, bud. Yeah, the, but rescuing him makes me so happy is, it does make Crowley feel like he's a zero fail. Makes Crowley feel like he's accomplished something after what's essentially a lifetime of aimless temptations. Okay, so I, oh my god, there's a lot to say about that, and I missed a lot. I'll be honest with you. I missed a lot initially. Hopefully, during my second viewing, I'll be able to expound on some of the things I missed. But, um, there, mm, mm, remember when I said the hope spot and how this is all gonna end badly? It's about to end very badly. So, that was a lot, and I have a lot of questions that I'm really scared will not be answered in the next episode. But first off, let's address the, I guess, elephant in the room, which is the room itself. A lot of people are going to look at the diversity, the different gender identities, and uh, nationalities and races that were represented, and kind of sneer at that, and the- listen, I would like people to know that this kind of forced diversity is just the world. People like this exist whether you have a problem with it or not. People with different gender identities and different races and nationalities are going to keep being in your fantasy media. You can either get with it or die mad about it. But that's besides the point. What I'm seeing here is a zero fail. besides not knowing how to make his own choices, doesn't know what it takes for people to make their own 
choices. I say weird vibes because it's not explained. <laughs> can angels manipulate free will or can they not? It's, it's the common pitfall of a soft magic system. And yes, it is a magic system because this is still fiction, even though it is satire. The show itself is kind of struggling to stick with its own rules at this point. I understand, I do. It is just a petty gripe. The whole thing about soft magic systems is I personally don't like them. I prefer hard rules, hard lines, so I know what goes where and for how long. I still didn't see a lot of agency from Maggie and Nina, which was really disappointing. This episode was very, very short. I was expecting it to be much longer or it felt very short. It did raise an interesting question with Maggie and Nina, where I don't think their awareness is plot armor. I don't know. This episode left me with suddenly a lot more questions than answers. That line, rescuing me, makes him so happy. Aziraphale does have a point, but it also shows that Aziraphale has maybe taken the whole implicit trust thing a little too far. To be honest, I really don't have a good way to describe it, and it's because I'm not able to see the sixth episode. And I get that it was supposed to be funny. Also, it seems to me that Aziraphale doesn't know what it takes for Crowley to save him. Like in 1941, Crowley went into a church, which is incredibly dangerous for him. Crowley is about to go to heaven to rescue him, and that's a lot. That's something that he's doing at a huge personal cost. That isn't something that's entirely Aziraphale's fault, because Crowley doesn't talk about how much it takes for him to save Aziraphale. He never explained how badly Hell punished him when he helped him help uh, Elseth. I don't know how to pronounce that, I'll be honest. Crowley went into the church and burned the entire time. Crowley rebelled against heaven a and drove through the actual ring of fire to get to him. So, uh... <sighs> Crowley never explained to Aziraphale, like, hey, this shit hurts. I honestly think that Aziraphale probably would have thought twice if that is something that Crowley would have explained to him. Or maybe Aziraphale truly is just that selfish. And I feel like we're not going to know until season three. I don't like the fact that it's the constantly, well, we have to wait till season three to get it. Well, we have to wait till season three to get it. And I'm sorry, I know a lot of you guys disagree with me when I say this. It feels like Pirates of the Caribbean. When the second movie, the second season, whatever is in the middle, all it is there for is to set up the main plot of the third season. I'm not gonna lie, this this season suffers a lot, it has a lot to prove, and I'm not sure if it's done that yet. We'll wait till episode six and see if it does. Right now, I, I do like season one better. Episode, I'm putting a lot of hope in episode six being able to pull this together, but I'm not sure if it can. Please do not take this the wrong way as in I do not like this show. I do like this show. It's incredibly charming. It's far more complex than anyone ever gives it credit for, it seems. And it is a very deeply emotional story that I really love, but it has suffered somewhat. Could have been COVID, could have been the writing process, because you know this was on the eve of the writer's strike. It could be anything, but it has suffered. Everyone involved in this project and everyone who's watched this project is clearly incredibly passionate about it. And I don't think Amazon has given this show enough credit or enough of a chance. I think when it comes down to it, my issue with the show is Amazon itself. Not necessarily the show, not really the writers or the actors, but mostly Amazon. It's always Jeff Bezos' fault somehow. I don't know how, but it's always Jeff Bezos' fault somehow. I, I did like this episode, but the problems with the show are more evident in this episode than any others. Regardless, please like if you like this video. I really hope you do because I had a lot more negative things to say than I thought. If you really like this video, please subscribe. And if you really, really like me, you can find me on Patreon where I post full uncut reactions the day before I put them on YouTube. So when I post on Friday, they're there on Thursday. And on the rare occasion I post on Wednesday, they're there on Tuesday. You can find me on any piece of social media, Tumblr, TikTok, Twitter, and what's that last one? Tumblr, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, but mostly Tumblr and TikTok because TikTok sucks and fuck Twitter. And with that being said, thank you for watching. Stay weird, lovelies, and happy eating.